Okay. So let's go. So it says circumference of R. Okay. Now, normally we would refer to the circumference formula, which is pi times diameter or 2 pi r. But it does not apply in this problem because we don't have a radius or diameter. What we have is a central angle and an arc length. Okay? Think about what you have. We have an arc length. So that means we're going to look at our formula card at the arc length formula. Now the thing is here, we know the arc length. So we're going to put 28.8 equals the central angle 165 over 360. That's not 360. Now, if you look at the, the formula card, right here is pi times diameter. Okay? But what is pi times diameter? Pi times diameter is circumference. Therefore, yes, we could, if we want to make, create more work for ourselves, put pi times diameter, multiply by pi, divide by pi, find the diameter, and then multiply by pi again to get the circumference. But if we just say that is C right there, all we have to do is put in our calculator, and this is the easiest way to do it. Type in literally 28.8 divided by, and then just put in parentheses 165 divided by 360. Okay? Otherwise, what you have to do is do 165 divided by 360, get a long decimal, probably round it, and then divide 28.8 by that decimal. But then you're rounding a rounded number. This is the way to get to the most accurate answer. Okay? And when you do that, you get circumference equals 62.6 centimeters. Okay, 28.8 divided by the division of 165 over 360. Okay, number two, arc length of C, well, again, I forgot to correct this, that should be C, that should be A, B, and this should be D, E, F, as we've already talked about. Okay, A, B, we are trying to find th this right here, the arc length. Well, as soon as you see arc length, that's the formula we're using. But we're trying to find the arc length, so we're working forwards on this one. We just use the formula 60 over 360 times pi times diameter. This is not the diameter, that's the radius, so we have to double it. Just type that in the calculator, okay? And since we've been doing it with the computer, let's just all agree to use the pi key. So if you were to type in 60, divide by 360, times the pi key, times 10, and that gives us 5.24 uh, inches. Now remember, the best way besides just watching this and looking at problems is look at the reference card. Make sure you know how to use the reference card and practice the calculator. And it doesn't have to be a gravity calculator. Any scientific calculator would be fine. All right, on this one, again, we're dealing with length. We have an arc length right here. This should tell you not to use the formula for area, okay? Pi r squared, we're not doing that. That formula has nothing to do with arc length. So you shouldn't be using that formula. We're not dealing with area, we're dealing with arc length. And we're trying to find the central angle. So this is going to be a working backwards one. Again, the formula says arc length equals central angle. You put CA or you just put X, whatever you want, divided by 360 times pi times the diameter. Again, we don't have the diameter. We have to double that. So it's 24. All right? Now, there's a few different ways you can go about this. The easiest way to not get too confused is get rid of the 360 first. That's on the bottom. So if you multiply both sides by 360, you'll get 5,652 equals 24 pi, uh, I'll grab my, and then x. So I'm not going to fit, there it goes, go away. That's 24 pi x. Okay, because we got rid of the 360, so this is all that's left. 24 pi x. 
Now, to get rid of the 24 pi, we have two choices. This led to some errors in class. Some people typed in 5652 divided by 24 pi. If you do that, you will get the wrong answer. Because what it's going to, the calculator is going to do is it's going to take 5,652 5, divided by 24 and then multiply by pi, which will be the wrong answer. If you want to do it, you have two choices. Do 5,652 divided by 24, get an answer. Divide by pi, get the final answer. If you want to do it all at one time, you have to put the 24 pi in parentheses. So if you want to do it in one step, it's got to be in parentheses. And when you do that, and this was an error on the sheet, it will be corrected when I post it to the classroom, but the answer sheet we did in class, I had 74.96, which round is 100, and we're rounding it to 10. So when you have 74.96, that's cool. Okay, we're going to have the hundreds, the six makes the nine round up, which is 10, which means we're going to 75. But we've talked about this in class before. Don't just put 75. It says round to the 10, so you have to put something in the 10th spot, even if it's a zero. Zero is a number, don't neglect it. And that's not degrees, so we're finding an angle. I mean, it's not inches, we're finding an angle. So it's degrees. Sorry about that. Again, the nice thing about math is, you can go backwards and check your work. You can use 75 divided by 360 times pi times 24 and see if you get 15.7 to check your answer, and you will get that. Okay. These are very easy. Think about this. The pi is going to go opposite of where it is in the problem. Now, we don't have one here, which means if you want pi in our answer, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. Pi over 180. And I'll come back and do all these, but I want to talk about on these, the pi is on the bottom, so we're going to cancel. The pi is on the bottom, so we want to cancel. Okay, so if there's a pi in the problem, we put it on the bottom to cancel it. If there's no pi, we put it on top, because that's going to be in our answer. And then all you do is don't divide, do not do 40 divided by 180. We don't want a decimal. We want a fraction answer. So basically, just to just simplify. Okay? Scratch off the zero first, divide by 10. 4 over 18, they're both even. So that reduces to 2 over 9. And then the pi just stays, and don't forget to write the word rad. You don't have to write radians, you can just abbreviate the rad. Another way to write that is 2 pi over 9. It doesn't matter, I'll accept either way. 2 ninths pi or two, uh, 2 pi over 9. So on this one, divide both by 10, you get 27 over 18. What goes into both those numbers? 9. How many times? 3 times and 2 times. I will write it this way. For this one, just so you can see the two different ways. So you can write as a fraction in front of the pi, or you can put the pi up with the numerator over the denominator. It doesn't matter, they're both right. Yeah, this one, six and seven, the pi is canceled. They're gone. That's the whole purpose. We're trying to get rid of that pi. And then you just crush the numbers. Five times 180 divided by six. Or if you want to do it mentally, 6 goes into 180 30 times, times 5 is 150. Doesn't matter. You got a calculator, use it. Okay, but then again, this is pretty easy mentally. You can do 11 times 180, a little bit tough in the head, divided by 9. But 9 goes into 180 20 times. And 20 times 11 you can do in your head with the little trick I taught you. Either way, 220 degrees. Or again, you just type in 11 times 180 divided by 9. And you got your answer. Okay, 8. Find the area of the shaded region. Once we see that word area, we know we're using the sector, area of a sector formula. Okay, the one with the pi r squared. Because remember, pi r squared is the area of a circle. So that's our clue which formula to use. On this one, it's just a straight problem. It says central angle. Divided by 360 times 
pi r squared. Notice, the only difference between this and the other formula is in the other formula, we have circumference here, pi times diameter, and in this one we have pi r squared. The central angle over 360 is standard because we're trying to find a portion of the entire circle. Now that portion may be a length or an area. So this one you just crunch the numbers. 240 divided by 360 times the pi key times 49. And when you do that, you get 102 point, I just realized on my key I did this wrong because I rounded to the 100 spot. So it's 0.6 inches squared because it's 0.63, which rounds down, you leave the 6. And remember, round down does not mean go down to 5, it means leave it at 6. So I'll correct this for the answer key that I post on Classroom. Number 9, on this one we're doing two problems. We're finding the area of the circle and the area of the square, and we're subtracting them. Area of the square is easy because it's 10 by 10. So area of the square is basically 10 squared. Okay, it's 100. Okay, very simple, length times width. Or S squared, this is a square. Area of the circle is going to be pi, and you got to be careful here, radius squared. So the radius on this one is 5. So we have to multiply 5 squared 25 times pi, which is 78.14. We're cutting the circle out of the square, so we're going to subtract 100 minus 78.14, which gives us 21.46. So 6 rounds to 4 up to 5. And that's meter squared. Now, number 10. Okay, I can't read my own writing. Uh, this is actually a 5. 5, 4. Which makes sense because 5, 4, and 4, 6 makes 100. So that should have been caught. Thank you. All right, so on number 10, this is a complicated problem. I certainly in class how I do it. You want to do, you got to do three things. You have to find the area of the circle. You have to find the area of the Pac-Man, the sector. And you have to find the area of the triangle. We're going to add these two together and subtract it from the circle. All right? Not a lot of room here. Uh, I'm actually going to go to a new page just because it's harder for the markers. So you, can, you should be able to squeeze it in with pencil or pen. So, first off, um, area of the circle, the entire thing, is pi r squared, and the radius is 11. So that's 11 squared, which is 121. So if you multiply those, you get 380.13. Okay? Now, the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle is one half base times height. Well, this one has a base of 11 and a height of 11 because the base and height are both the radii, the radius distances. So therefore, the 121 divided by 2, which is 60.5. And then we're going to do the area of the Pac-Man, which is 270, central angle, over 360, times pi r squared. Alright? Now, the thing is, you actually know what this is. That's right here. Okay? So, you're going to take that 270 divided by 360 times pi r squared, and what we get is 285.10. Now, if we add the 60.5 to this, this is 0, not 8, sorry, we get 345.6, or 0.60. Now, if we subtract that from 
point 13, whoops, what we get is 34.53 or just 0.5 centimeters squared. That's the area of that little section. So, not a hard problem, it's just step by step, it's a three part problem. All right, last one on this page. I'm creating a giant circular spinner, okay? I want seven equal sections. If the radius of the circle is eight feet, okay? Give the exact and the uh, round nearest whole number. So, for this one, first off, I just need the area of the circle. So the area of the circle is gonna be pi times 8 squared, or pi times 64, which is 201, so on, point zero six. or if you did point 0.1, that's fine, you know, it might be slightly different, okay? Now, that's the area of the entire thing. You don't get too complicated with this one, we're just splitting it up seven ways. So if you just divide that by seven, you will get, rounded to the nearest ten. 28.7 or 29 square feet. 28.7 rounded in the nearest tenth and 29 whole. All right, so page two, area of polygon. Very simple here, area is one half D1, D2. Okay, so let's think about it. This length right here is 8 plus 2. Okay, this length is bisected, so this is also 5. So what's that? 10. So basically what we have is 1 half 10 times 10, which is 100, half of that is 50. So that's 50 meters squared. And remember, I don't know my shapes, obviously, this is a triangle. If it's a regular triangle, it has the same measurement all around, it's equilateral, so it's 22, 22. Now the area of a regular shape, very simple formula, is one half the apothem times the perimeter. We have the apothem, it's already there, okay? The apothem is right here, and the perimeter is 66. So area equals one half the apothem times 66. And when you use that, you get 209.53. No, I'm sorry, it's 55, I believe, which rounds up to 0.6. And we don't know what units, so we just say units squared. So when you type in your calculator, you will get 55. The 5 tells the 5 to round up to 6. Uh, remember I screwed up on this one, this should say side, which is obvious from the drawing right here, because a radius of 9 makes it not work, depending on how you do the problem. Now, it doesn't look like there's a lot going on, and there's not. So remember, if we had the center here, we could divide this up into all these triangles. We don't really have to do all this, but if you've got to remember what's happening, the process, we're dividing it up into 10 triangles. Deca, God, Deca means 10. So, let's think about it. What we have is a triangle that has that being 9, and then 360 divided by 10, this is 36 degrees up there. Okay? Now, we don't have a right triangle, we can't do trig yet. So what we need to do is take that triangle and split it in half, making this 4.5 and making this, I'm just going to draw because it's too hard to fit in there, 18 degrees. Now what we're trying to find is this right here, the apothem. We need the apothem. Well, without counting, we have a degree measure and we have a side. From that degree, we have opposite. What we're trying to find is adjacent. Opposite adjacent is tangent, TOA. So we're going to take tangent of 18 degrees 
equals opposite 4.5, that's a 5, believe me, over adjacent. Okay? Now remember, when the x is on the bottom, we have to do a little trick where we switch them. So x equals 4.5 divided by tangent of 18. Just type in your calculator. Make sure your calculators are on degree, not mo under mode. You hit mode and make sure yours is on degree, not radians. Now they should standard be on degree, but just always make sure before you take a test. When you type in 4.5 divided by tangent of 18, you get 13.85. That means that the apothem is 13.85. So now we just do the formula. Area equals one half the apothem and then 10 times 9, the perimeter, 90. And that gives us 623.25. The 5 tells us to round up to 0.3 inches squared. 15. Okay. Remember, on, on all of these, the formula is area equals the area of the base, I'm sorry, the volume, my bad. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. Okay? So, we have to find the area of the circle and multiply by 21. That's it. And you're going to have all these formulas on the test. So, volume equals the area of the base is pi 8 squared, because the radius here is 8, diameter 16. So it's not a bad idea to write r equals h to remind yourself to do that. Times 21. And that's it. That's 21. Okay? So 64 times pi times 21, and you get 4,222.3 units cubed. Now, technically, on number 16, it's the same thing. You can find the area of the bottom and multiply by the height, or the area of the side and multiply by the height, but really when you got just a box, it's length times width times height. But if you think about it, what's the area of the square? Length times width times height. So this is still area of the base times the height. It depends on how you process it. So you're basically just multiplying those three numbers. And you get 5,120 cubic inches. Now 17. Again, it's the same thing as we've been doing. It just looks more complicated, but it's not. On the bottom, on the top, we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have a hexagon. Which means we're going to be doing that whole thing with the one triangle that we've talked about already. Okay? Now, each side is 5, okay? This is 5. But if we're just doing this little triangle, this is 2.5, right? Okay? Now, a hexagon, that's 6 sides. So we have to do 360 divided by 6 is 60. But we only want this angle right here, because we're cutting it in half, that's 30. But that's nice. Because we don't have to do any trig on this one, because we know that the relationship from the small side, which is 2.5, to the second side is just multiplied by radical 3. So this is technically 2.5 times radical 3. All right? Which, this time, we're not going to leave it like that, because we need a number. So 2.5 times radical 3 is 4.33. So the apothem is 4.33. And now we're right back to the same formula again. Area equals one half the apothem, that's a three, times the perimeter of the base. Well, what's the perimeter? 
One side is five, there's six sides, that makes the perimeter 30. So when we multiply those, we get 64.95. So what I get is an area of 64.95. Now remember, that's just the area of the base. The volume is that times the height, so we need to do times 25, and that gives us 1623 plus 2. 1623 points, now what we should get is 0.75. The 5 rounds the 7 up to 8 cubic feet. Eighteen. This is just going to be a big number. Formula. I had to have to have one of those on the video. Formula. Volume equals. That's a W, not a V. Volume equals one third the area of the base times the height. Okay. Now it's a square base. So it's one-third, square base is going to be 756 squared, because it's square. So the area of the base is going to be 756 times 756, times the height of 480.6. So this is just a big old number, huge. It's 91,560,000. 067.2 meters cubed. Big old pyramid. Lots of space in there. Okay. Now, two formulas here. Surface area and volume. Okay. So, volume. Volume is, and you're going to have these formulas, don't forget, 4 pi radius over 3. And surface area is 4 pi r squared. So basically we have to do this twice. We have to do the volume of each one and subtract, surface area of each one and subtract. So I'm going to do that under, do the work underneath here. So we're going to have four. There we go. Four times pi times four point zero nine two five. What is that? That is half of eight point five. Because eight point five is the diameter. All divided by three. That's going to give us two hundred eighty-seven point eleven. Then, we're going to do 4 pi, half of 2.7, which is 1.35, divided by 3, which gives us 10.31. We're going to subtract those, big old subtraction sign, which gives us 276.8 cubic inches. That's the difference in volume between the two. For this one, surface area is 4 times pi times that big old nasty 4.0925 squared, which gives us 210.47. And then we do 4 pi 1.35, a little easier there, which gives us 22.90. Subtract those, and we get 187. Point, uh, so it's around the nearest, well it doesn't say on this one, it's 5, 7, so let's just keep rounding and make it 6, because we've been doing tenths a lot. But since it does not say, if you put 5, 7, I would accept that, because the directions do not say what to round to. And that is the difference in surface areas. And we'll go right at 